What's up, guys? Welcome back to Views, the podcast where Jason's not sitting right next to me because he was abducted by aliens, so it's a far way of telecommunicating with him right now. David? David, they have me here. They want to... They want to speak to the the national security advisor. You need to get in touch with them. They've taught me their language. I know a little bit what he's saying right now. What is he saying, Jason? He's saying they're going to anally probe me (laughs) and that also he has a cousin that is coming. Hold on. He has a cousin that's coming to L.A. in November and needs a place to stay. Tell him I said bullshit. I want pictures of his penis in your butthole. I don't want to tell him that, David. Tell him that. <laughs> What's he saying now? He doesn't like that, David. He doesn't like that. And you'd think that you would be a little nice to me seeing that I've been fucking abducted by aliens, David. All right, all right. Get me out of here. All right, all right. <laughs> Roll the intro music. This is starting to scare me. And boom, that was the intro song by Bruce Wigner. He's one of our great friends. He hates Jason, which we, we still haven't figured out yet. Yeah, and now people on the street are coming up to me. And saying what? And saying, why does Bruce hate you? And what do you say to them? And they're dead serious when they say it. Well, because he hates you. Yeah. What do I say? Yeah. I say, I did nothing to this man. He's a music producer. He's a talented guy. I was the one who went to Bruce. To, to, I got. I just came, went to Bruce, and I said, "Hey, can you make us a theme song?" But and you, he was nice about to it. To be fair, you made out with his girlfriend. Oh, that's low to bring that up here on this on a public forum. So. Well, it's just weird. Well, jeez, because it's kind of unexpected, especially because he was working on our song. You'd think you'd have more respect for the guy. His dog girlfriend. Yeah, I I gave her a few kisses on the mouth. That's it. All right. <laughs> We all want to eat better. This is the worst <laughs> transition, but I needed to get out of that stupid made-up scenario. So he had a dog named girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We all want to eat better, but when it comes to snacks, sometimes it feels like the whole world is delicious. What and is bi- this? What's what? What are you doing? I'm just reading the ad. Nice. Okay. What's the ad? <laughs> it's for, let me get to it. Okay. I like the build You told up. me to bring a lot of energy. <laughs> but it feels like the whole world is delicious and a billion calories versus boring and tasteless. It doesn't have to be that way. Up your snack game with Nature Box. Nature Box is over 100 snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. So you can feel good about what you're eating. What are your favorite snacks, Jason? Don't just stare at me blankly. Well, I have all the snacks in my room. Okay. That, that Nature Box sent. Well, I, I don't share them. Let's be specific. Well, I. You, you have the wrappers of the snacks. No, I have some stored away because they're that good. I have the lemon tea biscuits, mm. the dried mango. Oh, love those. Uh, cherry berry bonanza. That is one of my favorite. And you're sure to find your new snack obsession at Nature Box. They add new snacks every month inspired by real customer feedback, the latest food trends, and professional chefs. Mm, it's so simple. Just go to naturebox.com, choose the snacks you want, and Naturebox will deliver them right to your door. Yep, they do. That's how I got them. What if you don't have a door? Well, unfortunately, that's a very sad story. A lot of people are without doors in this country. Hmm. Yeah, Just an open hallway? If you don't have a door, the snacks come right in. Seriously. Which is great, actually. Just straight into your mouth. Yeah. Well, the good part about Nature Box is there's no risk. If you ever try, we're, we're sorry, Nature Box. We're trying to spice this up. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever try a snack you don't like, don't eat it. Nature Box will replace it for free. And right now, Nature Box is offering views fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash views. Yes, that's naturebox.com slash views for 50% off your first order. It's naturebox.com slash views. Guys, oh boy, do we have something to talk about on the podcast today. It is time. Do you know what I'm talking about? You've earned, you've earned it. You, I've told everyone the story, but David, we've been Jason, walking around for about four days. So let, let, me, just, let me just break down what we're, about, what we're sitting on here. Um, a couple days ago, uh, actually like three weeks ago, we were picking up some drugs for one of my friends. Mm. I'm just going to be pretty clear with people. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to hide anything. And when we were picking up drugs, the drug dealer... Um, he was in Granada Hills, and he invited me inside to his home, inside to the studio he lived at. And I went inside, and it was a very dark and mysterious. We like, also thought this was the last time we were going to see you. This was at like think of, this was at like <laughs> one a.m. 
and like everyone's in the car and I get a text from from our friend and he's like come inside he wants to meet you and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like who wants to meet me and so I go inside to this drug dealer's like loft or whatever this house and it's completely blacked out it's guys it's a dungeon. It's a sex dungeon. There's chains from the walls. There's whips laying around. There's sex rooms. There's swing sets hanging from from the uh, from the ceiling, and it's all like satanic, super dark, very bloody, and like you know, mysterious, like goth type of vibes. And it's terrifying, especially because I'm just like the most basic white kid, like from like the most you know simple suburb on the planet this is like some real extravagant shit like i'm seeing and all my friends are in the car and i come back just run into the car i'm like you guys will you guys won't believe what just fucking happened and (coughs) And we're in the car like david's been gone a long time yeah they're in the car they're really worried i come back and i have like four missed texts from like each one of them in the car they're like dude where are you we're about to call the police what's going on all super worried yes and turns out the dude invited me and my friends to a sex party. And I'm talking like straight up, the waz- straight up out the wazoo, like a real sex party. Mm-hmm. And by sex party, I mean like, I asked, I asked him because I had no idea what a sex party was. I'm like, so people come here and have sex? And the guy's like, oh man, that's not all they do. Like you have no idea what they do when they come here. Mm-hmm. And, then he, and then he explained to me what they did last time. These, these sex parties happen once a month. And he was telling me that the last time that um, there was a sex party, there's people, it, this, this vlog is going to get a little gruesome. So if you're under the age of, I don't know, 45, we're sorry, because <laughs> you're probably going to find all this uncomfortable. Um, but he was talking about how there were girls being, uh, girls and guys being drowned. And then they were being, you know, they were being f- fucked from the, from the back while they're being drowned. And there was people being cut and there's people being like, there's people bleeding and they're having sex. Like it's super dark. It's, 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 it's yeah, but, but they're, they're all, it's, it's all consensual. Oh, it's all consensual. Yeah. Yes. They're not yeah, being yeah. drowned. They may be losing some air and coming back up. Yeah. Jason. Again, I didn't see any of that. There was nothing like that in there. <laughs> Jason's like, yeah. Um, no, no, no. But like, but some serious like fetishes, like some serious kinks were going on at this party. And he invited, he invited me and my friends to go back to the party. So I told Jason about it. This was like three weeks ago. So I'm like, hey, Jason, in three weeks, there's this party. We should go to it. I asked my girlfriend, Liza, who is a sweetheart. I'm like, listen, we should go to the sex party because I, 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 I can't imagine what goes on. And of course, she said, hell no. So we didn't go. But, but the best part about having Jason as a friend is you can throw him into anything and he'll go, well, especially when it has to do with sex. <laughs> no, I didn't want to go. I did this as research yeah. for the podcast, okay. for the listeners. Yeah. yeah no, but, but you know, from the start, when we got the text, I was like, I'm going and I'm going to go for a story for 100% the podcast. 100% research. 100%. No, no sexual des- desires at all. No. It was all business. No one had to have sex with me. Well, you that, know that. Yeah, I know. So the f- the funny thing was that there was just so much build up to it. Like, yeah, we were going all day Saturday. I actually looked kind of good. I got on yeah, a jacket. Jason, okay, so so long story short, Jason ends up deciding. Tell him to- how gross I look all the time. Jason looks disgusting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need to tell him. I think they kind of just could assume from how much we've talked about how you look. Jason looks disgusting all the time. Because I'm working, dude. And Before I was working with you, I was hanging out. I made one Jason, vine a day. you're not the only person on the planet that works. <laughs> <laughs> I, work, I, work, I work 80 hours a week. Do me a favor. Take a trip down to Wall Street and tell me how many slobs you see going to financial buildings. Oh, it's all slobs down no, there. No, it's not. Um, okay, yes, anyway. Long story short, Jason went... Uh, Jason decided to go to the sex party and he dressed up like a motherfucker i mean he looked like yeah. a, he looked like a goddamn pegasus i didn't eat that day so my jeans fit <laughs> it was great no he looked really good like this is the sharpest he's ever looked so yeah we're, we're getting we're we're, we're, we're uh, you know the call goes out buy the tickets i'm like okay and no one wants to go tickets are like 100 150 dollars you want 50 for so, a guy. So, so some people are a little bit like drawn back by it so so we end up getting our friend Corinna to come with. Which I was really surprised. Yeah. Who's, Saturday I called David and said, we need to find a girl to go. And she said yes. She, she, was, she was 100% down. And then our friend Seth came. And then me and Brandon were the ones that were chaperoning. And we were driving. And we were going to drop them off and sit outside while they were done doing their sex party stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, and they went into the sex party. First of all, then first we went to your, your apartment. To hold, hang on, hold on, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Before I hand it over to you, long story short, um, they went into the sex party. And then they came out, and they had Jason. 
I'll, I'll, I'll skip to the end right now. Jason got home at 9 a.m. And his roommates texted me at like 5 a.m. They're like, dude, where is Jason? Is he okay? Did you finally kill him? I got him at 7. <laughs> you finally oh, you got him at 7? <laughs> okay, you got him at 7. First what? of all. No, listen, listen. Hold okay. On. I'm, I'm taking it back. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. Bit. Go. No, no. You're going to take it way back. Okay. And Jason has Jason had this wicked story of what happened. I don't know if it's crazy, but he has a story of what happened. And I have not been, every time he's told a story, I've left the room because I wanted to experience <laughs> it on the podcast for the first time. So this is the first time I'm hearing the story too. Just because I wanted to have questions and react to it genuinely. Major props to old Dave Dobrik for holding out for five days to hear this. Every time I've been I, telling everybody. He's still literally everyone. He's, <laughs> he's gotten on a call with my mom to let her know. <laughs> like, oh, no, that does not sound good. <laughs> that does not sound like a good Saturday night. <laughs> not lit, not savage in any way. <laughs> all right, so, so now Jason is going to take it back, and he's going to tell me well, all about the time he went to the sex party. We went to your house, okay. first of all, and then you, you had... Had the option. David really wanted to go. I really, really wanted to go. And, and you had the option to go. She said okay. Liza gave me the okay, but like she gave me the okay. She's like, yeah, go ahead, go for it. And it wasn't even one of those like okays where it was like where it was like, yeah, do whatever you want. It wasn't even like that. Liza was genuinely just like, yeah, that's fine, just go for it. And but I just felt so. It felt so wrong. I see. I find that fascinating. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like, like was that a trap? Like. If you had gone, would you have been in, in trouble? But I think the main thing was that you wouldn't have want her to go. So yeah, you the, didn't feel the, like the way I looked at right. it is if she asked me to go to the sex party, I would be like, "Fuck no, Liza, you're not going." There. But at the same time, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll go with you." Right. But I mean, that's not a fair way of thinking. <laughs> with a rug over your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but she she was okay with me going. But I know that I wouldn't want her to go, so I was just like, "Forget it." I'll just sit in the car and, and have Jason experience all the bondage he can have. And and the other thing was oh and to be fair if I if I was to go I was I was obviously not going to partake in anything obviously it was just to watch okay of course yeah. and also we Brandon and you and I had a giant argument about whether it was illegal or not and you guys were so fucking arrogant for an hour Jason. on your couch it's illegal Jason it's illegal no it's Ill-. you guys were you're such little arrogant little shits who have not experienced the world fuck in you, any way Jason. no fuck, fuck you no, fuck. fuck you because you know what you can't say fuck you you know what Good. you can't say fuck you because I was right no, it's perfectly you... legal yeah was it legal it is legal why did it take you so long to get home why did it take me so long to get because home? Because I was on Molly, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you pick that up? At Walgreens? I didn't you do gotta, any Molly. Yeah? You didn't do any Molly? I didn't do any Molly. Okay. I didn't. Really? Yeah, really. Then how'd you get home? Let's go back to the... I'll, I'm going to gonna tell you the story. You don't know the story. Okay. Okay. But, but next time, fucking please, don't stand on ceremony for an hour don't st- lecturing me about something you haven't been to, saying I that it is illegal... There. Oh, you guys were so, oh, you, the two of you Jason, sitting there. there were drugs, illegal drugs being passed around. It is not. There was, there, you weren't there. There weren't illegal drugs being passed around. Jason, there don't no, play with me. There the were podcast. no, again, you weren't there. You didn't experience. So don't look fucking me, think. Look me straight in the eye. I right am. Now. I'm looking right into a fucking and, dipshit's brain and tell right me, now. Tell me right now, motherfucker, that you didn't do Molly. I didn't do any Molly. Swear on your kids? Swear on my kids. Well, then your kids are dead. <laughs> my kids are dead to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. We'll I mean, you're dead to my I'll, kids. I'll play, Fuck, I'll, I fucked that up. <laughs> I'll play this game with you. All right, I'll let's play, play it along. And I'm going to pretend like you didn't do Molly, okay? Okay, great. I'll just pretend. Okay. But I know what happened because I have eyes on the inside. Really? Yeah. And Who? I, let, let, let me tell you this. I, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm going to let you say your side of the story, and then I'm going to come in with, with how I know you did Molly. I, I love your side of the story that Good. you weren't there. It's great. I love when you think you fucking know everything. Okay, go like on. how the club was illegal when you'd never been okay, there. Okay, tell the story. Go go, tell you the story. can go. announce whatever you want. Tell the story. Or how, like, you'll be oh like, Oh my God. What? I've had enough. Tell the story. Okay, so we go in there. Everyone recognizes me from YouTube. I sign, take a bunch of pictures. <laughs> 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 no, not one person recognized me. Um,. We go in there. It's it's. We're just really tense walking in there. We're like we have no idea what to expect. We go to the wrong floor. Corinna and I are walking with like three really hot girls to like the eighth floor, 
And I'm like, oh shit, this is gonna be fucking insane. <laughs> and um, and they're like touching Corinna already in the hallway. Wow. And I was like, this is fucking gonna be lit. And we <laughs> we get like two feet away from the door. They're like, are you here for Bethany's birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> and Corinna and I are like, oh no 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 no. Actually, we think got the wrong. We're going to something else. <laughs> like it'd be so funny if we went into the birthday party. We're like, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you just start taking your pants off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you put your pants in the cake <laughs> who wants to take turns licking this icing off <laughs> but okay okay, okay so on, then then we go in yeah and the first thing you see is a woman walking another woman on all fours and the woman has a bone in her mouth oh like walking her on a leash <laughs> on a leash and is she naked what is she wearing she's got uh, underwear on, but you can yeah. see her butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James, like, I, I've never seen a naked woman. <laughs> I'm like, like talking to a 15 year old. I'm like, so, so, like, like, like panties or like a thong? Uh, these were like leather panties. What? And a mask, like a cat mask on, oh, like okay. cat woman. Exactly. She's being led around on all fours. Like straight up out of like an erotica movie. Exactly. So it was super cliche the second you walked in. Yeah. And again, you know the space. It's not very big. Yeah, it's not big. Not at all. There's a woman to the left um, swinging her hips and another, another woman's playing with her breasts. And, wow. and they're, they're obviously paid to be there. They're, yeah, they're performers. They're starting the party. Yeah. So then we get there and... Um, I came my pants. So I had to go... <laughs> I had to go back home and uh, get a change of pants. I Ubered back to Studio City, <laughs> changed my pants, got there, came again. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily. <laughs> it was smart, brought a second pair. <laughs> uh, and so we, we, we got in line. There's a lot of couples there. Okay. A lot of couples and yeah. very nice people. Yeah. Very nice. Talking to couples. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like striking up a lot of conversations with people, but then in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, they must think that I want to fuck them, you know? Yeah. yeah. So then that, that kind of created some weirdness. But I, I, anyways, met a lot of nice people and then um, got some drinks and they came over and they were like, um, you guys are, you guys are VIPs or whatever. Cause our friend hooked it up. Yeah. Hooked yeah. it up or whatever. We're like, yeah, okay, whatever. So then they brought us to the VIP section. Wow. And we started drinking. Okay. And it was one bottle of uh, Jack Daniels Yeah, for me and my friend. And um, Karina doesn't drink. Yeah. And uh, smartly, I kept being like, do you want a water? Do you want anything? <laughs> this dick. <laughs> and, she was, and she was like, no, I don't want yeah, anything. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So It's probably a good idea. Which uh, is a good idea. In, in parties like that to not which, drink anything. Which is a good idea. So then I strike up a conversation with um, a woman who's in her 60s. Wow, and that's an, so like you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and another dude who's in his fifties. Okay, and um, they're overweight, just for detail. Okay, okay. The, the woman's very, very overweight. Okay, and uh, but they're great people, you know, great people. And like, I'm hitting it off with the guy. Like, we're talking about things I haven't talked about with anyone. Like, we were talking about um, like how to love your kids. No, 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 not no. They, a, a little more in the middle of a sex party. Yeah, no. Like we were talking about. Wait, Christ- does, does your kid go to the elementary elementary school on the? On, <laughs> you guys know each other from the PTA meetings. We, we were we were talking about like Dave Chappelle's special oh, okay. in detail. Like yeah. this joke, that joke, that joke. Like oh wow, and it was like kind of cool. You guys hit it off. We really hit it off. Yeah, we're having a really good time. And then she says, um, "I'm gonna make you a drink." And I was like, I was already kind of drunk, and I was like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. We have we have so much. We have a full bottle of Jack between, you know, us and I'm not going to drink a full bottle of Jack. And um, and then again, she she makes it for me, and I go, I go, oh, oh, why did you do that? Like that, like meaning, like oh, you didn't have to do that. Yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. nice. I don't need to drink your alcohol. And he says, because I told her to. What? He says, because I told her to. What do you mean? Like, he looks me in the eye, like, because I told her to. That's kind of scary. He was kind of scary. Why are, you, why are you touching my leg? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was your penis. <laughs> I keep going. And I take the drink and I fucking bomb it down. Yeah. And uh, so then. That doesn't sound right. No. So then from there, things get super hazy. Oh, okay. So you did do Molly. No. Except it was disguised in your drink. Okay. So the, from there, I watch a guy get a blowjob from another guy. Wow. I watch a girl get a blowjob. Um, Corinna and I watch a sex show 
a, a dildo sex show. What's that like? Uh, it's just like a girl on all fours and another girl just just dildo. stabbing her. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Jesus Christ! And and uh, and, and it's, it's all right in your face. Yeah, it's literally like, hey guys, um, Patricia's gonna get. Slam with a dildo in like two minutes if you want to run over to the red corner, you know? And everybody gets, picks up their drinks and like, oh, well, Patricia's my favorite. You know, like it's, it's like that. Holy cow. And, and, and it's, it's odd. It's odd to be there with your two friends. And these two friends that we went with are all kind of, we're all friends with them. And it was just odd to be there with those two. Yeah, because it was. And because and we're all watching someone get fucked. And then we're like, and then, yeah. It's like being in like a, like a dream that you don't want anybody to know that you're dreaming it. Very well said. Yeah. Very well said. Because I looked over at Corinna and like she's just in completely focused just watching these two girls have sex. Yeah. And she didn't do anything or make out with anyone or anything. But, you know, in that moment, you're like, but was what's it, up, Corinna? Was it, <laughs> this did, is crazy, huh? Did it almost feel like in the moment, did it almost feel like when you enter that room, everyone kind of gave consent? Or was it still really like, you can't touch me unless it, it, I unless it, I want to have sex with you. It wasn't like it. Everyone gave consent, but it was like this is totally normal, and no one should feel any shame for like enjoying if, this. If my girlfriend Liza went in there, right? Would I would I have to be scared, or would she have to be scared with men just coming up to her and grabbing her? Not at all. Oh, it's not like no. That. It's not like that at all. No. So, so it's it's just like a bar. Yes. It's like the same rules of like a regular bar. Yes. Except there's Patricia being pounded by a, <laughs> by a rhinestone dildo. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Then we watched a spanking show for a while. Then a regular, then a regular woman. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What? It's your, it's your ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Susan? Susan? <laughs> um, a regular girl gets up there. And she's, uh, she's pretty drunk. She goes, enough, enough of this. She's like, my turn, my turn. Takes off all her clothes. Wow. Straps in her, her hands. Okay. And sticks her butt out and then gets fucking like badly spanked. Like it looked like it hurt. Like I don't know. And I didn't, and I, I don't know. Like almost like a beating. Just like a psh, psh. Wait, what was she getting spanked by? Uh, like a spank. Like a crop, a riding crop. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that person was masked. So that was like, so it was like, the sex part of it wasn't so much fun. What was fun was like just talking to regular people that, it, just not having any inhibitions at all. Not, not being at a party and not feeling bad for thinking, oh, I love those girls, that girl's tits. Because that's usually when I go to a party, you're like, like for example, like when I first got there, there was a girl, um, like sucking another girl's breasts. Yeah. And and I and I like walked over and I You I, made some stupid joke. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, eat up. <laughs> hey, somebody's hungry. Get after it. Don't worry, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> uh but no, my first instinct was to like I turned away, you know, because that's like none of my business. Because you didn't want to look. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah. no, they want you to look. Like they want you to look. That's why you're there. Yeah, that's so strange. That that I can't wrap my if head If they around. didn't want you to look, then they would go in one of the private rooms. Like your first instinct was, oh, shoot. Like you don't want to be rude. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So then we start dancing, and I'm fucking having a fucking grand old What time. time is it right now? I have no idea. I guess what time did you pick up Corinna? Three? Yeah, three. Okay. So yeah, so at three, I'm fucking zooming, like having the best time. Okay. And um, talking to everybody, like yeah. bah, 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 talking like about everything, and 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 uh, there's there's people making out with each other, and I, and I made out with a girl. Wow! But then right as right after I was making out with her, she just jumped to another dude and started making out with him. And oh, were a lot of there was I'm assuming there was a lot of prostitutes there. There were some prostitutes there. That's the one you made out with. No, that one was bucks. no, no. I, I <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the one I made out with uh, was not a prostitute. But so then from there, I'm I'm out. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And I um, I black out from three a.m. And this has never happened before. I've never been blacked out. I I I I, I don't know what happened from about like four a.m. to seven a.m. Okay. No idea. I get the my next memory is I'm on this street, on our street, Jesus on Christ. in Studio City. Uh-huh. 
I am sta- and you're sucking on someone's titty <laughs> <laughs> on our street, and God's watching the landlord's titty. <laughs> oh no, uh, no, and um, and I'm on the street, and I'm just like hanging out. I'm in front of a house, but I think I'm in West Hollywood. But I'm actually in Studio City because the street looks similar. This is actually really hard for me to retell the story because it's giving me like it's making me sick to my stomach. So you were because it was such a bad night. You have no idea how you ended up back on your street. Well, I do because I like do you later remember? on Sunday I I got more information from people. But at this point, I have no idea, and I think I'm in West Hollywood. Two police officers come up. Oh no! And they're like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "Nothing, nothing. I'm just standing here." And they're like, "No, you're not. You're walking to people's doors. You're banging on doors." You're, you're knocking on doors and you're going through people's front yards. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. And, and I go, I go, I was. <laughs> and they go, yeah. And I go, I am so sorry. I go, I was at a party and I got roofied. I don't know what happened. Oh like that. my and God. They, go, they don't believe me. Okay. They're like, they're like, do you live here? Do you live in this neighborhood? And I do, but I don't think I'm in this neighborhood. Yeah. That's all messed up. I'm I go, no, no, I don't live here. I go, I live in studio city. And they're like, and, and they're like Studio City? They said to me, like, where in Studio City? And I'm like, I, I don't remember what happened, but I did say that. And then they're like, get out of here. Get out of this neighborhood now. Get the fuck out of here. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally. And I, um, and, and, and I, 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 I'm trying to walk to my friend's house yeah. in West Hollywood. I they, wish you got arrested. I know. Oh, bailing you out in the morning. I know. I would have had the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, Jesus Christ. You're such an evil person. <laughs> I right, go. So then I walk out. I keep walking out of the neighborhood because I have no choice because they're going to arrest me if I don't. Yeah. So I walk to La Cienega, but it's not La Cienega. It's Laurel because that's the next busy street. And I'm like... Oh God, I'm I'm here. I'm home, but I have no idea how I got here. Oh, shit. Then, then I go to the gas station. Now I'm walking, and people start talking to me, friends of mine. So literally, I would be walking with David Dobrik, and we you'd be talking to me. You'd be like, I don't know, man. I didn't really love the last vlog, and and I'd be like, it's okay, man. You know, like it'll get better. <laughs> and David, David, I fucking turn my head. Watch how fast I turn my head, and I come back, and you're gone. <laughs> And you're gone. And I'm like, where the fuck did David go? Like, yeah. I was just fucking talking to David. So then. I, can I say the yeah, thing? Yeah, jump in. I got a call from Todd. Yeah. That can mo- I tell this part? Yeah, yeah. okay, go, All go, right, go Let go. me tell this part. Yeah. Because this is the best part of the story. Okay, yeah. I finally figure out where I am. I go to the gas station. It takes me like 10 minutes to decide which way to walk. And I finally am like, now I'm on our street. I'm four houses from our street. And I know where I am. I'm like, I'm, I'm alive. I'm okay. I'm going to get through this. I'm okay. It was fucked up, but I'm going to be fine. Yeah. I don't have my jacket. I don't have my phone. I don't have my keys. Okay. And my fucking, and I've fallen. I fell eight times in the three hours I was walking around. Cause I do remember I kept falling. Where'd I you kept falling? Where was your walker? <laughs> Did you leave it at home? Fucking at your mom's house after I fucking banged her out. <laughs> okay. So then. I get about th- three houses away from our house, yeah. the neighbor's house. I see Todd in his, in his um, pickup truck. Oh, awesome. Hat on backwards, like looking like Todd, really good. Like that what, what time is this? This is at 7 a.m. Okay, so Todd's just out and about at 7 a.m. Like yeah. He's ready to go somewhere. Yeah, right, which would never happen yeah. on a Saturday. Yeah. Todd's, our, Todd's our friend. He, lo- he likes to drink. He's, he's very good looking, whatever. I have the most mundane fucking conversation with Todd. I go, Todd, what's up, man? And he goes, Jason, I'm just checking out this yard sale. (laughs) There's no yard sale. (laughs) Not only is there no yard sale, there's no Todd or truck (laughs) to find out. How'd you figure that out? Wait, I go, I go. He goes, I'm thinking about buying this table. I go, do you need some help? (laughs) He goes, nah, I got it. No problem. It's It's pretty light. And I go, okay, cool, cool. Is the door open? Because I'd lost my keys. Yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's open. I'm like, oh, cool, man. Todd's up. I can hang out with him. And he brings that table back from the yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> I go up to the front door. It's locked. Okay. Like, Todd lied. Yeah, Todd lied. I'm like, what's Todd doing? I might go, like, why did he say that? Is Todd like, fucked up? Is he drunk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you reprimand Todd when you see him in the next morning. Todd, what was wrong with you last night? <laughs> All right. Side door, nothing. And then? And then 
Finally, I knock on the, the back door. Yeah. And Todd comes out, like, really tired in his boxers. He's like, hey, 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 hey. Cause you know Todd doesn't get up at 7 a.m. He opens the door, and I go, hey, man, were you just at a yard sale? Like that. <laughs> he goes, no. No, man, I'm sleeping. It's 7 a.m. <laughs> Why would I go to a fucking yard sale? And I go, Oh, Todd. Oh, man. And then I uh, went in the house, got, got to my desk, tried to like text people. No one's up, obviously. And then um, I went to sleep for a while. And then Scott and Todd woke me up at like two in the, two in the afternoon. And it was the fucking worst day of my life. It was like, <laughs> so bad. Jesus Christ. And so um, then, I, then the other information that I got as the day went on was I tracked the Uber. Oh, so you took an Uber. I did. Well, I checked. I went online. I didn't have my phone, but I went online and checked my Uber account. And um, so I call the guy, and he's like, my friend, my friend, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? He goes, I was very worried about you, my friend. You scared me. You scared me last night. I tried to take you to the front door, but you tell me you do not want to go home. <laughs> my friend, you talk last night. The whole way home <laughs> to a man named Seth. <laughs> you have long conversation with a man named Seth. There is no one next to you, my friend. <laughs> I keep saying to you, who are you talking to? <laughs> my friend. Then you try to make out with a girl named Corinna. <laughs> in the back seat. Is this real? Yeah. There is no girl in the back seat, my friend. This is 100% real. Yeah, 100% real. Jesus Christ. Then you are shivering. You are cold. I worry about you, my friend. And um, yeah, and then never found my jacket. And it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was Jesus fucking awful. Christ. Yeah. I got fucking roofied. You think you got roofied? Yeah, I know I did. Because Corinna said when she saw the guy's pour the drink, she was like, that's weird. Weird. Yeah. That's not what I heard. <laughs> That's fine. I, I know what happened. No, okay. I mean, I believe you. Um, I, but, I, I just heard that you, that you took a molly and it was game over after that. I heard that you guys were so bad <laughs> that this was like, keep in mind, this is like a sex party. And you guys, you guys were asked to leave. <laughs> Seth told me, he's like, I was, it was like 5 a.m. And I was, ac- and uh, this was Seth. This was Seth speaking about himself. No, I, I wasn't you. asked to leave. I know, but Seth. Yeah. Seth was like, I was asked to leave because I was misbehaving so much. Oh, yeah. I don't know what he was doing. I, I, I didn't see him, and I don't remember. But I wasn't asked to leave. They, they put me in an Uber. So more, That's how I found out I got an moral Uber. Moral of the story is you're definitely not going back. No, no. I'm going back on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. And I really, really wish I just would have been there to just watch it all unfold. I wish you would have been there so you would have taken me out of there. Just to wa- I wouldn't have taken you out of there. You I, would have been, have? I would have been the one pouring you the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like to the guy, hey, that's that's definitely roofied, right? <laughs> Can we I, get another one of those? I have a I have a vlog on Monday and a podcast on Thursdays. We really need to amp it up here. <laughs> Little do you know, is I put everything together, <laughs> dude. I mean, that's that's like out of straight up out of a horror movie. Yeah, it was like, bad. That's the, the I've never blacked out in my life. Ever. That's like, a- you know when people are like, I don't know, man, I got drunk last night, I blacked out, like my friends always say that. Never. You've, you genuinely, like actually completely blacked out. I mean, Jesus. Next time, I'm going to go with you and I'm going to take care of you. But you know what the most important part about being taken care of? And you know what the most important part of that night was? I do. It was getting to your bed. Because <laughs> into my Brooklyn and sheets. Into your Brooklyn and sheets. Buying great sheets is an easy way to upgrade your life. The right sheets can make or break a good night's sleep and help you find better and more well rested every day. Even though quality sheets make for quality sleep, most high end bedding is marked up more than 300% by the time it reaches the store. Brooklyn makes quality luxury sheets and bedding accessible to everyone. Brooklyn was founded in April 2014 by husband and wife team Vicky and Rich Fulop on the philosophy that people deserve simple, beautiful home essentials without 
without the luxury price. Brooklinen cuts out unnecessary markups and manufacturing waste in order to offer exquisite designs and exceptional savings across their collection. Brooklinen is the fastest growing bedding brand in the world because people love these products. Their sheets have over 12,000 five-star reviews. They have versatile collars and patterns that you can mix and match to effortlessly complete any decor. This is luxury bedding, underpriced. you got to try these sheets today, and I have them on my bed. Chicky puts them on. Put Listen, them on, on these, Tuesday. these are some badass sheets. Brooklinen has an exclusive offer mm-hmm. just for our listeners. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use the promo code VIEWS at brooklinen.com. In fact, Brooklinen is so confident that you'll love their new sheets that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all of their sheets and comforters. There's no reason not to give these sheets a try, guys. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code VIEWS at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code VIEWS. Yeah, and I have these sheets. They sent me them. They're Brooklinen. How have you been sleeping lately? I've been sleeping pretty solid. You sleep good? I didn't go to that party. We actually went to Panda Express. What did... Yeah, that... I think that's just as interesting. What did you do? Because the funny part was that David was willing to wait for us. Yeah, let me tell you. I had a rough night as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking even. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to Panda Try to compare your night to my night. You know night. what? You try eating Panda Express at 2 a.m. and dealing with that tummy ache. <laughs> that's, Is that what you did? That shit was an explosion. Oh, that's awful. I would have rather been drugged than have, <laughs> having to deal with that Panda Express again. Some would say you were drugged. <laughs> <laughs> we went. No, we just went to Panda Express, and no, no, should, no, you didn't just go to Panda Express. There was an, an, another three hours not reported there. No, we literally just went to Panda Express, and we really? sat outside That's the it? curb. Yeah, we, we sat and talked. Well, yeah, we sat and we sat and talked in the car, and then we went to Panda Express, and then we were on USC campus. Uh-huh. So everything, uh, so it was you know, there was a bunch of students out, and outside the Panda Express were I, I shit you not six different piles of puke. Oh, which to me was like it was. First of all, it should have been a red flag. <laughs> it should have been maybe go to McDonald's or go just fucking home. <laughs> but but I was just like, you know what? I've I've I know orange chicken personally. I've had it. Yeah. And I've never that's never happened to me. Yeah. And so I fucking stuck it up. I'm like, I'm gonna go get a bowl of orange chicken, and I did, and it sucked, and it wasn't a good idea. It was two a.m., one a.m., whatever it was, and yeah, I felt like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon was complaining the entire time because he thought he got food poisoning. And Brandon's a hypochondriac. Yes, he so is. So listening to him the entire car ride saying, yo, you think orange chicken can like poison you? <laughs> He's the worst Should we that. stop by? Should we stop by the doctor's office before we go home? Uh, am I going to die? He's the worst with that. Yeah. So he, he's uh, genuinely a hypochondriac. I've never known a hypochondriac. I've never, I've never met real hypochondriacs. It's actually really, really scary. Um, we were with him once, and he hit his head on my car door. And we, we were going to USC tailgate. So like we were going to watch the football game. And instead of coming out with us and maybe walking it off or getting something to eat or drink food, he sat in my hot car. <laughs> it was 100 degrees. <laughs> it was like 100 degrees. He sat in my hot car for like three to four hours just waiting for us to get back. That's, that's, that's the kind of person a hypochondriac is. Guys, we're ending the uh, end of the show, but before we end it, I have to let you guys know we're going to have a live show this Saturday coming up in San Francisco. It's too late to buy tickets because you guys messed up. You guys should have already bought tickets. <laughs> um, but where there's a good chance we're going to go out to New York, possibly yep. have a show, possibly a show in Boston, mm-hmm. and possibly a show in the Vernon Hills, Chicago area. So around be Thanksgiving. On, yeah, around Thanksgiving. So be on the lookout for all the... Jason's background on his phone is himself. Well, that's, re- that's to remind me to plug my merch. It's a picture of me and my merch. That's just a picture of you holding a dog. In my merch, in my <laughs> mouth, my tattoo mouth tee, see? Okay, so guys, also buy- Sorry you brought it up. <laughs> also buy, okay, yeah, maybe that was like a whole plot to, to have <laughs> you bring it up. Also buy Jason's merch, go on fanjoy.co. Say something about my phone. <laughs> <laughs> also buy, um, <laughs> buy his merch at fanjoy.co backslash Dobrik and backslash Nash or whatever it is. Yeah, and I'm psyched. It's San Francisco is going to be amazing. We have a, a, so a lot of special things planned for you guys. No, so if you're, yeah, we do. No, we don't. For San Francisco. Do we? Yeah, we do. Hmm. Like what? Like uh, a podcast? Uh-huh. Like we're putting on a podcast? There's some special things happening. <laughs> Are you going to be naked? I'm going to take a roofie. I'm going <laughs> to roofie David. <laughs> Please, anything to end that show. Get that over with. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm very I am nervous. Looking for, I am looking forward to it. I can't wait. No, no, no. It's, it's 100% going to be we a lot love of it. fun. We're Thank- flying up on Saturday morning. We're going to fly up there. We're going to only be there for a day. So if you're in San Francisco and you want to see us, you, gotta, you better hurry up because you won't see us. You won't see us. 
there for too long. Yeah, and thanks to everybody buying all the Views merch. There's tons of tweets and Snapchats I get in those uh, those T-shirts. Sorry this podcast was so... Um, maybe it felt like short because it was one continuous story, but, I mean, guys, I've been waiting for this sex story for a really long time. And these sex parties happen once a month. So remember, if you happen to run into Jason Adam, just look out for the guy, okay? Yeah, take yeah. me home with you. <laughs> if you happen to see Jason at a sex party... Go up to him, tap him on the shoulder, and just tell him it's time to go home. <laughs> no matter what point of the night it is, just just send the poor guy home. He has two kids. I think it's I think it's odd. Like I, I, I think it's bad that I'm living my life for content sometimes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like at when I was at the party, Jason, you're literally living a 20 year old's life. David, I'm not living a 20 year old's life. I'm living a life. You were knocking door to door and <laughs> buying tables at garage sales. That's only what a 20 year old would do. You have two kids at home, Jason. I, David, I'm here to experience life. You're like, I know, and that's why I went and got myself roofied. <laughs> do you know what it's like to have two kids? <laughs> but no, I, I do worry about that because I was at the party and I was like, no, I can leave. I want to leave. I'm ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like... But, but Patricia's starting in 30 minutes. I can't leave now. <laughs> no, but I was like, nothing's happened yet. Yeah. And my, in my mind, I was like, I've been doing this for either my vlog or your vlog. And I'm, I ended up not putting it in my vlog because it's like too sexual. Yeah. But, you know... No, I'm. I guess I can't do that any. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not living the life of a twenty year old. I'm living the life of no, someone I'm, that was, wants to experience things, so I can create things. That's the life I'm living. No, I was totally kidding. Oh, but you definitely did do Molly. All right. Well, that's all the time we have. <laughs> I'll see you guys later uh, next week on Views. My name's Jeff, and that was Jason. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>